All right, so today is going to be a bit of a different video. I want to touch on something that more and more people are talking about, but still not really taking seriously. And that thing is the singularity. I think there's a real chance we're already inside the early stages of the singularity, and most people just haven't noticed yet. Now, just to be clear, when I say singularity, I don't mean conscious AI or robots suddenly taking over. I mean AI systems starting to meaningfully improve the systems that create the next generation of AI. And based on what we're seeing right now, there are strong signs that this kind of exponential self-improvement flywheel has already begun. Let's get into it. Okay, so the first reason I think we're already in the singularity is the fact that these models are becoming incredibly capable at coding. I keep coming back to this tweet that went viral a few weeks ago, where a Google engineer talked about their experience using Claude code. She wrote, I'm not joking, and this isn't funny. We have been trying to build distributed agent orchestrators at Google since last year. There are various options. Not everyone is aligned. I gave Claude code a description of the problem. It generated what we built last year in an hour. So keep in mind, this is a Google engineer posting on her own, admitting that an AI agent from a different company recreated a year's worth of serious engineering work in a single hour. She admits it's not perfect and is still iterating on it herself. But just think about the implications of this. Coding isn't just any task. Coding is how we build AI systems in the first place. And when AI becomes extremely good at the thing that builds more AI, you start to get something that looks a lot like recursive self-improvement. And there's an even more recent example of this. Anthropic just launched Cowork, which is essentially a non-technical version of Claude Code designed for everyday knowledge work. What really stood out to me is how fast this was built. According to Anthropic, it took them about a week and a half to build Cowork. And they say that all the code was written by Claude Code itself. Now, to be clear, there was human involvement. They planned the system, designed the workflows, and iterated back and forth with Claude. But that's kind of the point. The humans were acting more like supervisors and product designers, while the AI handled the actual implementation. That's a huge shift from where we were just a year ago. And when you see AI researchers or engineers using AI to automate their own work, that's a pretty strong signal that we've crossed into the early stages of something very different. Something that starts to look a lot like the singularity. In fact, this same engineer claims that all of his work in the last month at Anthropic was written entirely by Claude Code, every single line of it. He says, software engineering is changing, and we're entering a new period in coding history, and we're still just getting started. So coding is one side of this. It's AI accelerating the production of more AI. But there's another side to this that's even harder to ignore, and that's what's happening in math. Because math isn't implementation. It's not scaffolding. It's not automation. It's the frontier. For a long time, people assumed this was the line AI wouldn't cross. That AI could help check work or search through ideas, but not actually contribute something new. And that assumption is starting to break. Over the past year, we've seen AI systems make meaningful contributions to open mathematical problems, including Erdos problems, problems that professional mathematicians have been stuck on for years, if not decades. These aren't benchmark questions. They aren't things with known solutions hiding somewhere in the training data. These are real, open problems. And the contributions have been publicly acknowledged by working mathematicians. Just a few days ago, a proof generated by GBT 5.2 Pro and formalized with Harmonic for Erdos Problem 397 was accepted by Terence Tao, who is widely considered one of the greatest living mathematicians. If I'm not mistaken, this is actually the first ever full solution generated by an AI system for an open problem, for which subsequent literature review did not reveal any new relevant prior partial or full solutions. Essentially, this is the first time an AI actually made a new math discovery, without a known prior solution and without humans knowing the answer in advance. So, at this point, we've seen two really important things. AI is getting extremely good at coding, the thing that builds more AI, and it's starting to contribute to math, the thing that defines the frontier of knowledge itself. 
But what I think might be the biggest signal that we're entering the early stages of the singularity is how fast the length of tasks AI agents can successfully complete is increasing. This is something researchers at METR have been tracking closely. And what they're finding is that task length isn't improving slowly or even linearly. It's improving exponentially. For example, we now have models like Claude Opus 4.5 that can complete tasks lasting nearly five hours with around a 50% success rate. That might not sound that insane at first, but if you compare it to where we were just a year ago or even two years ago, it's a massive jump. According to METR, the maximum task length these systems can handle is roughly doubling every seven months, and that estimate may already be conservative. And this is where things start to get uncomfortable, because if task length keeps doubling, you don't go from five-hour tasks to six-hour tasks. You go from hours to days to weeks very quickly. And at that point, you're no longer talking about AI helping with parts of a job. You're talking about AI taking on entire projects. Projects that used to require teams of humans weeks or even months to complete. That's exactly what we saw with the Google engineers example. A year-long engineering effort compressed into about an hour. Not because the problem got easier, but because the system could reason, implement, and iterate without constant human intervention. Task length is what makes that possible. So when you put all this together, AI accelerating the creation of more AI, AI contributing to new mathematical knowledge, and AI operating over longer and longer autonomous time horizons, and then you pair that with the fact that the largest infrastructure build-out in history is already underway, global AI computing capacity doubling every seven months, and the fact that demand is growing at an insane rate, with OpenAI projecting 2.6 billion weekly active users by 2030, it stops looking like normal technological progress and starts looking like the early stages of an intelligence explosion. Maybe we haven't crossed the singularity in the most dramatic sci-fi sense yet, but nearly every early signal people have historically pointed to is already here. I mean, automated AI research is already happening and will only happen more. Have we lost control of it? I'd say not exactly, at least not yet. But AI development isn't stopping anytime soon. And so this is why I think we've already passed the point of no return. If we're not already in the singularity, we're about to enter it. Elon Musk actually believes we have already entered it. And he's probably right. Sam Altman has also said recently that we've passed the event horizon and that the takeoff has started, calling it the gentle singularity. And so what does all this actually mean? It means the singularity probably doesn't arrive as a single moment you can point to on a calendar. It arrives as a process. Quietly at first, once systems begin improving themselves faster than humans can meaningfully keep up. And when you look at what's happening right now, it's getting harder and harder to argue that we're still far away from that world. But I'm genuinely curious what you guys think. Do you think we're already in the early stages of the singularity? Or do you think a lot of this is just overblown hype? Let me know in the comments. And as always, feel free to drop a like, hit that subscribe button, and I'll be catching you guys in the next one.